So I thought I would start, you know, another series where I'm not just like dumping on the industry or talking about how I'm always right or doing Q&As. Um, because I haven't, I used to do a lot of uh, product reviews on my website, although honestly, uh, didn't do many because there's not that much to review. And at the time, I wanted to really try to keep it positive, and let's just say that going forward, I probably won't do that. Regardless, um, this is a, a product that I've actually wanted to, been, uh, to review for a really long time, because it is one of... Uh, the best things I, I've read in, in quite some time. I mean, I've read a ton of shit over my career, and um, this is really good. Uh, and specifically, it's the Game Day Coaching Manual, A Powerlifting Coach's Guide to Maximizing Game Day Performance by Matt Geary. So for context, I have coached powerlifters on and off for since the early part of my career. Um, I want to say the first powerlifter I trained was late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and for the last eight years, I have been coaching um, an elite female powerlifter named Sumi Singh, who just for, she holds um, multiple state, national, and world records across three different federations, USPA, WRPF, RPS, in both the 48 and 52 kilo weight class in both the open and two different master's divisions. My point being, she's strong. I also currently coach two other people. One is actually um, Sumi's daughter, who's gone to a couple of meets and had great results. And last year I started coaching a new female master's lifter. She did a couple consults with me uh, for fat loss stuff and then got into lifting and came down to Austin and I taught her how to lift. And uh, she's already done her first meet, uh, hit nine out of nine, and um, she's uh, getting strong. But I've got the most experience, uh, like I said, over eight years with Sumi. And, um, I love powerlifting. It's a fantastic sport. It's one of the best communities I've ever been involved with. Everyone is super helpful, super friendly. Um, meets are great. Uh, Austin, sorry, Texas, we are uh, blessed to have three great federations with great lifters, great organizers. I, I can't say enough about it as a sport. Um, this is part of why I did that, that Q&A on powerlifting on uh, Tuesday was to lead into this. Now, at some point, I want to say Sumi uh, had sent me um, a podcast with Matt Gary, who uh, mentioned that he was the coach of the USA powerlifting team, which was news to me because I didn't realize that um, USA had a powerlifting team. Like I knew, I mean, obviously there are international meets when we go, but he apparently is is uh, the coach uh, of, of our team, and he has a, an ex- highly uh, qualified powerlifter in his own right. His wife, Susie, is incredibly accomplished as a lifter. And um, what he's known for, or at least really emphasizes, is his game day coaching. And that's what this book is about. So a little more background, and then I'll, I'll um, get into it. So what do I mean by game day coaching? What, what Matt is referring to in this case is what he does on the day of the competition for his lifters to ensure that they achieve their goals, whatever they may be. Um, and I don't know how much people listening to this really know about powerlifting. Uh, in short, uh, it's a sport comprised of squat, bench, deadlift, done in that order. Some people do the full meet, some people do bench only, some people do push pull. They have bad knees, which is bench and deadlift. The goal, primary goal, is to lift the most you can for single repetition, under very strictly defined competition conditions. The squat must be below parallel. The bench must be, bench press must be paused on the chest. Um, there are all kinds of technical rules. There are three judges, uh, one head judge and two side judges watching for different infractions. After any completed repetition, the judge either gives a white light for good or a red light for bad. Uh, majority wins, so uh, two or more white lights is a pass lift and two or more red lights is a failed lift, and you get three attempts to lift the most weight. So there are many goals. It could be to set a PR. It could be to set the best total, which is the sum of all three lifts. It could be to win best lifter, which is based on a convoluted equation called Wilkes or sometimes dots that I won't get into. It could be to uh, win your division in terms of your weight class, your age group. Um, I'm sure at the championship level, there's more than that. The point of game day coaching is to Help your lifter achieve those goals, whatever they may be. Now, 
looking at my coaching, just for background, right? I coach my lifter every day in the gym. I adjust her training every day in the gym, but she does all the work. She does the actual lifting. I, I, I count to one a lot and load her plates, and that's about it. But on meet day, that's when I have to work. Because my approach, I'm not saying this is the only approach, all I want her doing that day is lifting. I don't want her thinking. I don't want her to know what's on the bar. All she has to do is go lift the thing nine or possibly more times sometimes you get a fourth attempt for records. I do everything else. I have a warm-up sheet. I pick her attempts. I tell her when to warm up. I tell her when to wrap her wrists. I tell her when to get dressed. I tell her when to take her pre-lift caffeine. I tell her when to potty. I tell her where to be. All she has to do is lift the thing because it's the one thing I can't do for her. My only purpose on that day is to put her in a position to succeed. That's it. And I'm always exhausted by the end of it. I spend the entire day of the meet running around, checking the board, running a stopwatch, making sure she's where she needs to be, in her warm-ups, in her lifting, to ensure that she can hit her goals. She does nothing else. So for 13 weeks, the length of the competition cycle, she does the hard work. And on meet day, that's my time. And that's what Matt Gary's manual is addressing, is all of his years, probably decades at this point, of experience with game day coaching and how he approaches it with different lifters in different situations. Now, this is a long book. It's a huge digital book. It is nearly 200 pages, and I'm not going to go through it section by section. But I do want to show you the table of contents so you can just see how thorough this thing is. Right, so you can see it. Chapter 1, Philosophy. Chapter 2, Psychology. Chapter 3, Roles and Responsibilities. Chapter 4, Uncoachable Lifters. Chapter 5, Goals. Chapter 6, Data. Chapter 7, Scouting. For Jason Tremblay, The Strength Guys. Chapter 8, Game Planning. Chapter 9, Performance Pyramid. Chapter 10, Making Weight with Kedrick Kwan of Performance Training. I think it's supposed to be performance. Chapter 11, warming up. Chapter 12, competing. Chapter 13, attempt selection and strategy. Chapter 14, equipped lifting. I, I mean, this book could really not be any more thorough. Like, I don't even know where to start in terms of reviewing this, other than to say it's fucking incredible. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he gives obviously his philosophy of coaching, um, psychology of training, what he feels the coach's roles and responsibility are. And let me note, one of the things he does bring up, right? I know how I coach my people. And my lifter doesn't want feedback. She doesn't want to know. She just, when she's in, in competition mode, the focus is laser. And she just lets me handle everything. That's not right for every lifter, right? She's very quiet. She's very reserved. Some people need a hype man. Some people want to have input on their attempts frequently for right or for wrong. Some people want feedback. Some people, like, there are different personalities in this sport. I just happen to have worked with a lot of people that that's not really how they, how they work. And one of the big things Matt Gary, one of the points he makes, is knowing how to work with a given lifter. And that means learning them. Right, and I'm not sure how he does it other than being incredible. Like he makes it sound like frequently he has given lifters at major competitions that he has not really worked with in person. And to have that ability to figure out the lifter and what they really need on the day is just impresses me that much more. I mean, I I know my lifters inside and out um, in terms of what they need and how they warm up. And like I, I don't I couldn't do it. I also can't handle more than one lifter at a time. I'm just too it's not the way I do it. And I'm not saying that's bad. Um, I know several coaches in Texas, uh, Gary Hunter, a good friend. He handles four, five, six lifters on the day. And um, I couldn't do it. I would have a nervous breakdown. My one lifter exhausts me. But again, that's me. That's who I am as a coach. Matt Gary has, he's the ability to do it in a way that I can't. But my point of this being that as far as roles and responsibilities of a coach, you do need to learn the lifter and what they need if you're handling the person. And that comes with experience. I modified the way I peaked my lifter and what I do with her during competitions over her first couple of meets. Because first couple of meets I took her, um, she did not perform to her best, and that was on me. 
and we analyzed it afterwards and made changes and, and got it figured out. But again, that, that really addresses um, individual differences in lifters, and that's really important because you can't assume as a coach that your lifter will compete the way you did, assuming you were a competitor, many, many are. Um, you can't try to force a single way of competing onto the lifter. You have to figure out what that lifter needs, what mine needs and what yours needs, or what mine needs and another lifter might need can be very different things. And uh, he really addresses that. On top of everything else, you know, he talks about, um, you know, timekeepers and errand runners and spotters and loaders and attempt selection. Like I said, I handle it all for my lifters so that they can just lift the thing. Some people want a little more feedback. Um, again, it's a matter of, of learning your lifter. But again, my job, I, the lifter should only do what they want to do. I want to do the rest. All I want them to do is lifting. I don't even like letting other lifters load the, their own warm-ups because I feel that that's my job as a coach. The lifter should be lifting. I, I want them saving their energy, so I'll load for other people um, in between events where my lifter's resting. So we get beyond that. Uncoachable lifters, and let's face it, there, there are some. Usually I think it's been a while since I've read his book, but that's in the context of people that just won't listen to you on meet day. They are going to do what they're going to do. They're not going to accept your expertise in terms of attempt selection of what they should be doing. They want to lift based on their ego rather than on what you are doing as a coach. And sometimes you got to move on. Um, talks about goals, weight classes, aging up, move, you know, coming back, playing the long game, which I think is a really important factor. One of the things I remember in one of his early podcasts, he talked about how a lifter would come to him and go, hey, coach. Can you put 50 kilos on my total in eight weeks? And he would go, well, maybe, probably, but you might get hurt and you'll probably get burned out. One of his big things is for longevity in the sport is taking the long game. And I've done that with my lifter. Early on, we competed her four times a year because we had the events spaced out. I would rather her make a two and a half kilo, a five and a half pound improvement on every lift four times a, a year. And that's 20 pounds on each lift then go for big numbers and have her get burnt out and get hurt. She's had minor injuries over eight years, which is just part of high-level sport, because we've taken the long game over the course of her career. You know, she's more than doubled her squat poundages, doubled her bench poundages. Her deadlift is absurd. But, and I did that by always going gradually. So he makes a big point of that. Um, data, this is something where I think he's really brought some interesting stuff to the game because now we have the ability to get all this data and he's done a ton of analysis. And I think one of his major points, uh, I mean, some of it is looking at, you know, typical percentages between attempts and those have been pretty standardized for a while, but looking at what, looking at what good competitors do on the assumption that they've probably determined through trial and error, what is a good approach to it. One of the really important things that I took from his stuff early on was that he had found almost unquestionably that the lifters who won their division or category made more successful attempts than the ones that lost. And that gets into a whole other thing with the philosophy of attempt selection. And I'm not going to get into that. Read his book. But basically, you're better off making 8 out of 9 or 9 out of 9 than making 6 out of 9 attempts because you get three attempts for each uh, of the three events. And the data backs that up. And, I mean, I've, I've always done it less for that specific reason than just because I'm more conservative and I like to see success be, breed, build success. I'd rather my lifter make all their lifts and make a little bit of progress the next meet than go for broke, unless I have to. And it's just kind of worked out, and I was doing that before I even, even read his book. And I was like, well, it's nice to be validated on, on my stupid ideas sometimes or my approach. Um, talks about scouting, and that's really more of an issue if you've got uh, competitors that are in heavy competition with other lifters, and I'm sure that happens at the, the higher levels. Seeing, you know, what they're good for, what their typical competition results are, looking to see like, all right, is this a guy that starts light in the deadlift and then goes for broke? Because as a coach, that gives them the ability to um, adjust his game plan, which is the next chapter. Right. And that's in terms of like, OK, you look at the lifters goals. How do we best achieve those? Who may they be competing against in a division? I had that happen early in Sumi's career where 
she was on the line for not only the total against a lifter who had very different numbers from her in distribution, but the bench record was we were in competition with somebody. And the deadlift record, she was in competition with someone else. So I had to very much look at how best to take those records. And that frequently comes down to being crafty in your temp selection. And, and at the highest levels, that means knowing who your competition is. And Matt goes into that. Right, so once you have those goals in place, then you, you make a game plan looking at the training and where are they, how prepared they are, um, trying to get an idea of what they're good for at the meet, uh, coming up with your attempts. Um, and he actually, one of the things I really like in this book is he gives samples of how he uh, applied this with different lifters in different situations um, in Chapter 9, including uh, his wife, uh, Susie Hartwig Gary, and also Ray Williams, um, the first raw 1,000-pound lifter. Also, Bryce Lewis is a phenomenal lifter. And I, I don't know the names Sam Cowan and Patrick Carr, but they are there. The point of this being that like, he's worked with some of the top guys and to figure out how best to get them to, to their goals. Um, he talks about the performance pyramid, which is a bit more psychology. Um, chapter 10, making weight. That is an issue. My lifter goes through it uh, every meet, much to her uh, misery, having to make weight and determine what's a good weight class, how far can they go. Um, a lot of strategies for people that are going to do that. Um, Warming up, warming up for me, that's a huge part of, of, uh, of performance. And he talks about, you know, timing warm-ups, which is a key factor. I, I shot a video on that a couple years ago and never put it up on figuring out when to start warming up to make sure your lifter is ready on time, but not too early and not too late. And there is a whole craft to that. And I mean, I, I run, like I said, I run a stopwatch for constantly through the meet because I'm insane and I need my lifter to be exactly in the right place at exactly the right time. And um, I mean, I'm rarely more than 30 seconds off from my timing of when her attempts and, and the events start, but that's because I'm nuts. But he talks about that. Um, competing talks about, you know, the different objectives uh, for that someone might be, uh, might be trying to achieve. And then honestly, I think one of the, you know, one of the really, I mean, it's an insane chapter has to do with attempt selection and strategy and how to approach different goals. Um, his general attempt selection method, situational strategies, if someone is going for an individual event medal, um, chipping record weights, which is part of the strategy, coaching a subtotal lifter, someone that's looking to make a big subtotal, which is the squat and the bench added together, um, lot numbers, victory, you know, how to... It's very calm. I'm not going to try to detail it because it would involve an hour of explaining how the sport works. Um, it, it's just as thorough as it gets. And he gives examples of how to approach this given the situation. Right now, I'll be honest, I haven't run into a lot of those situations with my lifter, but he clearly has. So there is no situation you can imagine that Matt has not detailed in a given example of how he did it to get his lifters to his goals, to their goals. And obviously he's very successful at it. And then finally, the chapter that was of the least relevance to me had to do with equipped lifting, because that does really change the game in terms of the apparel, how you warm up, coaching. It is different, right? You have to warm up with equipped lifting very differently because frequently with lighter weights and, and some of the, the more extreme bench shirts and squat suits, like the lifter can't even get the bar to their chest until it's above a certain point. That's a whole separate ball game, the timing, because, I mean, I got at our last meet. I watch lifters try to get out of those suits for, like, a squat suit for, like, 30 minutes. I've even helped lifters try to get on extremely tight knee sleeves, and it took three of us 10 minutes. Like, adding equipment to the mix adds a whole separate dynamic to the training, to the meet, to the attempt selection, to the strategy because of everything that's involved with that. So to say that this book is comprehensive would be um, an insult to the book. Um, and I would even note, you know, at every book that you buy is like, you'll get free updates, and usually that's total crap. But roughly a month after he released it, he added a couple of case studies of uh, coaching examples that, that uh, were left out of the initial book. I got an email that said, hey, download the new book. And um, he hasn't done one since then, but honestly, I think this is about as comprehensive um, as it gets. I mean, look, y'all who know me know that I don't like anything. 
including sometimes my own stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't agree with everybody on a day-to-day -day basis, including me. But for me to say this many good things about a product should mean something in that regards. So uh, let me sum it up. So let me make it clear. This is a niche book, right? It is not that, I mean, powerlifting is growing as a sport. Make no mistake. It's kind of exploding right now, which is fantastic to watch, especially in the master's division, especially in the women's and women's master's divisions is where it's, it's amazing to watch. I mean, Sumi is in the master's division, although she competes very successfully in the open. Uh, I mentioned my new lifter, who is, uh, I want to say 53, I think she's the same age as I am, who just getting started, and she loves it, and I'm, I'm having been in this for a long time, what I'm seeing uh, is that, you know, this is that generation of women that was told in their youth that if they lifted heavy, their ovaries would fall out, and they're coming out to powerlifting meets, and they're crushing it, and um, I love to see it. Anyway, like I said, regardless of the, the fact the sport is growing, this is very much a niche book. If you are not a powerlifting coach, you will get nothing out of this book whatsoever. If you are a powerlifting coach, even if you're very good at what you do, and trust me, I know there's great competition coaches out there, because I know many of them, you should still read this book. Because even if it's not consistent with what you do with your lifters, you will learn something from it. It may give you an idea, something to experiment with. It may give you a case study of a situation that you'll experience with one of your lifters and be like, hey, I know what to do because I read, read Matt Gary's book. I cannot too highly recommend this for coaches. Even as a lifter, I would recommend this. Um, many lifters do handle themselves, and many can. When I did my meet, yes, I did compete years and years and years ago. I, I handled myself. I made my own attempts. I sort of knew what I was doing. Um, so if you're a lifter who does handle themselves during a meet, this is a worthwhile book to read because it may, again, give you some different ways of thinking about it, how you select attempts, what you may do in certain situations. Um, if you're in head-to-head -head competition with someone for a record, how you might alter your attempt selection to get to your goal. Or it may not. It, 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 but again, it's, it's, it's not, your time won't be wasted for reading this as a lifter. If you're a lifter that's handled or has a coach, I don't, it may or may not be useful to you. I mean, again, it may give you some things that you, you know, I, I'm, I'm more of an autocratic coach. I will listen to my lifter when they give feedback. We do that after the meet. But, you know, you might come up with something and go, hey, I, you know, read this. Maybe is this something we can try or let your coach read it or both of y'all read it and you may get some good ideas. But, I mean, if you're involved in the sport, I cannot too highly recommend this book on every single level. Um, Again, it's been too long since I've read it. I think there was one minor point I disagreed with, and I only bring it up just to show you that. And it's of such minor note. It had to do with meat warm-ups. And Matt offered, and this might have been one of his podcasts, that he found that his lifters didn't need as much warm-up on meat day because of the adrenaline, because of the excitement. And I see exactly where he's coming from. Make no mistake. I don't do that with my lifters. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm saying, again, this is a matter of knowing your lifter. For mine, we set up a process that runs robotically from start to finish. I know exactly how long our warm-ups take. I know exactly what her optimal warm-ups are. If I were to change something on meet day, it would throw my lifter off. I'm not saying Matt is wrong. I exactly see what his point is. I would never do it that way personally. But again, that's a matter of knowing your lifter. If you know that your lifter doesn't need as many warm-ups, and you are, especially if they're bigger male lifters and you really need to try to save energy emotionally or physically, I absolutely see where he's coming from. I work mostly with smaller females. They're not squatting 700 pounds. I don't have to worry about an extra warm-up, you know, 550 tiring them out. So again, context. But beyond that, I cannot too highly recommend this book. It's worth every penny. It's worth every word. Matt is as experienced a coach as they come, and um, he has wisdom to offer. So whether you're uh, an experienced coach, I'd say especially if you're a beginning coach in powerlifting and, and still trying to learn your craft, you must read this. You must. Matt has done the sport a phenomenal service in writing this. 
to pass his experience on to other lifters, which again is part of why I love powerlifting as a sport. Uh, strongman is very similar. It is one of the sports where people will help each other out and give each other feedback and information and wisdom because at the end of the day, and this is something, you know, even knowing all this, powerlifters support each other in competition the way they just, other sports don't. Because if you are competing against a lifter in your weight division, in your age division, in your category, and they outlifted you, that just meant that they were the best on the day or they were the most strategic on the day. Um, it is a sport that shares information and shares advice and shares wisdom because at the end of the day, you still got to put in the work as a lifter and as a coach. So again, Matt has done a real, a real service to the sport by putting down his, his decades of accumulated wisdom for those of us still involved in the sport and those who will be involved in the sport in the future to see what successful um, coaches have done. And uh, the final point Matt makes uh, in this regard is that competition is getting a lot harder. As more people enter the sport, it's the, the, the little stuff is starting to matter much more. Where crafty attempt selection, where what you do with the lifter, where bringing them out, bringing the best out of them, or putting a position to succeed is starting to play a much, much larger role as the competition is getting so much more uh, competitive. So I highly recommend this book. So it is available in ebook form at Matt's website, which is supremesportspt.com. And I put the link directly to the game day coaching manual uh, at the bottom of this and also in the notes. Um, it is $65 now. I was lucky to get it pre, uh, uh, I pre-ordered it, so I got a little bit cheaper price. But again, it's worth every penny. I cannot too highly recommend this book to any coach of powerlifting, to lifters themselves. Um, read it. That's all I got to say. For the record, I neither read nor respond to comments or questions, either on YouTube or on Instagram. Uh, because I don't care. But I don't delete them either like the rest of the industry will do. Uh, test it. Go put a critical comment or question on Brad's wall and he'll block you and delete it immediately. I simply don't care. If you want to tell me I'm full of shit and I suck, great. You want to tell me that I'm awesome and you want to have my children, fan-fucking-tastic. You ask me a question in the comments, great. I'll never see it. Now, I may try doing a weekly Q&A, and if you want to send me a question, you can send it to questions at bodyrecomposition.com, and there's exactly a 0% guarantee that I will answer it. But you might get lucky. See you next time.